Ladies and gents, this is Jonah Faulkner, and this is Jonah Faulkner on Finance. Today, we're going to be listening to Jerry Morrow, but why are we going to be listening to Jerry Morrow? I saw some interesting videos that I am going to do my own spin on, where financial advisors react to investment advice, financial advice, um, online. So we're going to start with YouTube. Maybe we'll get around to TikTok. Maybe we'll get around to uh, other platforms. Maybe we won't. Let's see how this goes. All right, bear with me. <laughs> Do you really want to be that person that has to work for the rest of their lives because they didn't invest as early and often as they should have? If you're trying to avoid this grim future, then you have to invest right now. But wait a second, hold on. I've got all of this debt and I am hemorrhaging money every single month through this stupid interest that I have to pay. Right. Why do you show a grapefruit? What does grapefruit have to do with hemorrhaging? What does a grapefruit have to do with hemorrhaging? All right, slow the F down real quick. Why don't you... To invest or to pay off debt? It's such a stupid and boring question. I don't have time for this shit. By the time you're through watching this video, you will know exactly what to do, and then I'll let you know what I did with my 82 freaking thousand dollars in debt. Some people will say, oh, I can't give you a straight answer because your situation is different from Mr. McMusterton down the road. That's a stupid answer because there are some- Sounds like he's straw manning people that do due diligence into their clients' backgrounds before advising them on what prudent to do it's definitely not as easy as giving blanket financial advice but uh we'll let him continue some general guidelines that you can go off of to help you make an informed intelligent decision before we get into the guidelines there are four things that you need to keep in mind when deciding for yourself the first one is risk tolerance if you decide what? to invest what? instead of paying off debt no 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 well, well, well maybe 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 what is your risk tolerance for carrying X amount of debt? Nope, that's not at all what risk tolerance means. That is not at all what risk tolerance means. I've taken the liberty, got the definition for y'all. Y'all can read that or you can just listen to me explain it. Um, risk tolerance in a financial advisory perspective, in a financial planning perspective, is how comfortable are you with your portfolio declining 25% in a month. Does that make you want to sell everything? Does that make you want to buy more? Are you neutral? Can you stomach that, but you don't really feel conviction either way? That's, as you can see, what risk tolerance means. Uh, we'll let him continue. That for X period of time. On the other hand, if you do run into a catastrophe and you are focused on paying off your debts, at least the balance of your debts will be a little bit low. The next one is the guarantee. There is never a guarantee that you will get a particular return in the stock market. But on the other hand, there is a guarantee that you will get your debts paid off if you focus on that instead. The next thing to keep in mind is how- Missed opportunity to hype up people that are paying down aggressively their debts. Money that you pay toward a credit card, toward a high interest loan, towards your student loan, towards your mortgage, towards your car note. Say it's 8%, say it's 12%, say it's 25%. If you pay your balance off in full, you don't get charged 8%, 12%, 25%. By virtue of not getting charged that, you have in effect guaranteed yourself that amount of earning. See what I did? It would have been a cool little segue that would have been effortless had he been aware. How long it will take you to pay off your debts? Would you be okay with sitting on the sideline of investing so that you can pay off your debts? You can focus on just your debts for X amount of years instead of investing and making your debts last for longer. The last thing to keep in mind is to always invest if the company that you work for has a matching program. So if they match up to 3%, then you have to invest that 3%. It's free money. Take advantage of it right now while you have the opportunity. I agree. It is free money. Take advantage of it right now while you have the opportunity. If there's no match, it's uh, not as important. 
One thing I want to make very clear before we get into the guidelines is that do not use this method to decide whether you should take out debt or not. This is only for if you have debt. Because if you want to buy something and you need to take out debt for it, you can't afford it. And if you can't afford it, you shouldn't buy it. Unless it's something like medical bill. I agree, and I heard something similar to that that goes, if you can't afford to buy something twice over, you can't afford to buy it, which is basically what he said, but what I'm saying is a little bit more extreme, but they're both, I'm sure, equally as, as effective. You got to take care of yourself, of course, but don't do it to go buy something stupid and go in debt for that stupid item. Now it's Okay, if you can't afford a pet, don't go into debt to buy a pet, but calling pet, singling pets out as stupid things to buy, I take issue with, and I'm sure a lot of pet owners would take issue with as well. It's time to get into the guidelines. Now, two things that I want you to keep in mind while we're going through these guidelines are this, because the numbers are all based off of these two things. The first one is we have to account for inflation. So... We are going to assume that there is 2% inflation per year. I got this 2% based on the average over the last... What? 20 years, dude. That ain't... There's 2% inflation per year. I got this 2%... 20 years? My boy. Anyway, and now, <laughs> in hindsight, 2022, 20, almost 2023, we're in here, thereabouts, but... 2% is not, um, you know, inaccurate, but he, he, he is sh displaying data for more than 20 years, so I'm not sure why he's saying 20 years, when he very clearly did not get data from just 20 years. Based on the average over the last 20 years, on average, inflation is about 2%. The second thing we have- That wasn't 20 years either. That is not 20 years either. On average, inflation is about 2%. The second thing we have to keep in mind is some sort of an investment return. We've got to assume something. And I know that I said don't assume that you'll get X return at any point in time because the past is no indication as to how the future is going to go. But just to be safe, I decided to pick an S&P 500 index fund to go off of. And since 1928, the average return is 10%. So just to lowball it, we're going to say you could get a 7% return in the stock market if you invested as opposed to paying off debts. Now, I know there's going to be some naysayers. Hey, Jerry. The stock market is up right now. Trust me, I know. I've gotten in. He's about to say something that I'm going to indict him on, but I want to give him credit uh, for what he said beforehand, saying that past results are not an indication of future results. And that is incredibly prescient. And the best thing that we can do is, wherever we have the uh, longest historical data, the greatest historical data, um, the S&P 500, for instance, we have a greater degree of certainty when we're estimating a return over a given number of years. So I'm going to let him continue so that I can skew it. Investment right now, and over the past year, it's up 20%, almost 20%. But Jared, what if I have a great stock? What if I'm making so much money? I'm making more money in the market than my loans are co costing me. Excellent. Good for you. Jared apparently is doing the very same thing here from December 15th to 2016. December 15th, 2016 to December 15th, 2017. He, we're assuming he's showing his portfolio, but it says there's a 19.21% annualized return. And just because I like to check up on people, we have gone ahead and got the S&P 500 with dividends reinvested for the same period of time, December 2016 to December 2017. And as you can see, 20.912 is a quincy bit. Oh. It, is it smaller? Oh, it's 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 almost as though it's almost as though he could have instead of making the decisions himself, he could have just bought a low-cost index fund and did better. The independence, the financial independence, the guru, the investing guy.
This guy has negative alpha. He's bragging about negative alpha. All right, we'll let him. We'll let him continue on. I suppose. Just to put an asterisk there. So I yeah, get it, but we've got to pick something, and that twenty percent is not going to continue. Most likely, it's most likely going to go down over time because investing should be long term, not short term for the average person like you and me. Now let's get into the actual numbers. If your interest rate is five percent or more, then I would recommend paying off your debts first. But why? Here's some. If 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 your interest rate is five percent right now, since inflation is above that, your real cost of borrowing is negative. The money that you're returning to your lender is worth less to your lender than the money that they gave you, even though you're giving to them more money. The value of that money is less than the money that they gave to you. So. We'll let them continue, I suppose. Some examples to show you why. If you've got a debt that has 5% interest, you've also got to add the bad inflation, which is 2% per year. If you can make 7% in the market, you've got to deduct those numbers. Therefore, you will have a zero overall return. And as you can see in example two, this is where you go even more into the red. And that's not a good thing. In example three, that's, I'm not going to say the word, but that's bad. That's like a credit card. So you are losing, losing, losing money. If you're saying, Jared, I can get 0%, I can break even, it doesn't matter. Because you can get a better interest rate if you just- His little graphic is, is helpful if you haven't gotten the picture already. If you're carrying debt almost all of the time, depending on where that debt is and the interest rate of that debt, if it's a credit card and it's a higher interest rate, the, the chances that any licensed professional is going to tell you, hey, yeah, we can take your money. Yeah, we can do some investments. I don't think is acting in your best interest. Um, but we have to give him credit. It, even if you're getting very, 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 very favorable credit terms, it's not in the Buffett spirit to uh, take out what is in essence a letter of credit for investments. You know, people do stuff on margin. Buffett does not do stuff on margin. I am a Buffett disciple. I do not do uh, investments on margin. Anyway, so we'll let him, we'll let him talk. Debt, not a good idea. Not even loaning against your stocks. I'm not for it. For especially wealthy people, it makes a whole lot more sense. The higher your tax rate, the more it makes sense to loan against your appreciated securities than it does to sell them for tax purposes but generally for most people it's a bad idea to go into the market with existing debts especially as he just illustrated if the interest rate plus inflation exceeds the expected rate of return which it almost always will especially with inflation at where it's at now i'm sure that your interest rates have gone up in accordance so it's there's an even worse picture uh, than what he uh, just showed. You just put your money in the bank. So pump all of that extra money towards your debts so that once they're paid off, you can go buck freaking wild on the stock market. A quick tip is to always try to get your interest rate. I like it. It's lowered if you can. Like like that way it can get you below that 5% threshold, which would help you out in the long run. Another note to the 5%. He didn't really give you any idea the idea as to how to go about doing that but basically you call whoever your debt issuer is your loan issuer your credit card issuer is and make your plea to them rule is the student loan syndrome student loans they can't ever get wiped off your record unless one of three things happen you die you become disabled or you pay them off the next guideline is the four percent rule if your interest rate is four the student loan thing is also or less this is where you have to really think about what your personal goals are and what your risk tolerance is looking at these two examples makes it obvious as to why this is such a gray area because if you've got that four percent interest rate and you factor in inflation and you deduct that from the seven percent investment return that you could get you've got that one percent the other one you've got three percent but please keep in mind that there is something to be said for wanting to get rid of that risk no matter whether the interest rate is one two three or four percent the exception to this rule is the mortgage 
because the terms of mortgages are longer, usually 15 or 30 years, most people don't have that much money to pay towards their mortgage. And the interest rate is so low that it almost doesn't make sense. What's gonna be the return on your investment? For me when this came out, interest rates were low. I'm sure they had been low for quite a while, but they sure aren't now. Me, I have a 3.99% mortgage and I am not paying it off anytime soon because my money is- So he's in a sick position with a 4% mortgage with inflation well above 5%. His cost of borrowing, as I said earlier, is effectively negative. The money that the bank gave to him to buy the house, he's returning it to them in greater proportion but the value of the money collectively is lesser. He is going to be better served either in the market or investing it, reinvesting it into my business. When I had 82... I don't know what he's doing in his business. I'm assuming it's YouTube and I assume his ROI is better than the market. And I would assume if he's not getting, if he's not getting a investment return at all close to what the market returned, I'm wondering what funds he's investing in because he's a proclaimed self-proclaimed uh, I sold all my stocks and bought index funds guy so you would think he would be up to speed on expense ratios and so forth but perhaps not uh, we'll let him continue. $2,000 in debt I decided to just pay off all my debts I forgot about all the interest and I just paid everything I possibly could one of the main reasons was because of a stress reduction. I didn't want that stress sitting in the back of my mind of having all this debt, even if it was below 4%. Another reason that I was okay with just focusing on my debt was the fact that I was technically still investing. What? 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 I'm so confused. He's He was not in a rush to pay back his mortgage. And we agree, it's a smart idea. 4%, inflation's above that, cost of borrowing is negative. Seen on my debt was the fact that I was technically still investing because- Still investing? Oh, and the 4% thing that he just mentioned. If, if, if all his student loans were below 4%, I get the stress reduction thing. It's a valid debt repayment strategy to not go about it mathematically but if we're going about it mathematically you don't pay your lesser interest rates first my guy um if you do the snowball method maybe it just so happens that your smallest balance card is also the lowest interest rate but it is entirely counterproductive to pay your lowest debt you're none of your lowest debt your lowest interest rate it it, it 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 it's but he said it was about stress reduction so it's it was likely not a math decision but if it were he made the wrong one that stress sitting in the back of my mind of having all this debt even if it was below four percent another reason that i was okay with just focusing on my debt was the fact that i was technically still investing because the company that i work for it matches. So I was investing up to that certain match. I still have debt because I have a mortgage, but the thing to keep in mind is- So he was investing because he was getting a match. So the lucky duck. So yeah, that's the that's the one caveat. If you're, if you're in debt otherwise, um, but you're offered a match through work, through a 401k at work, um, that makes sense. That always makes sense. You're getting free money so whatever the match is some places are super generous some people do it up to the irs max which i believe it's eight percent but you know even if it's one percent i i feel like it's worth doing um not a plug for robin hood but they just launched a ira with a one percent match and it sounds like not very much but you know one percent on six grand is 60 bucks you know that ain't nothing that's a few shares of something Anyway, you know, that shouldn't put you over the line, Robin Hood, or this way or the other. But if you're getting free money, take the free money. When I purchased the house, it was a, for a very modest amount. And my monthly payment is a very modest amount. Heck, I could work 
at McDonald's making minimum wage and I could still pay my mortgage payment no problem. And I also plan on turning this house into a rental property in the future. So at this point, my money is better invested in index funds or reinvesting it in my business, like I said. Please don't be one of those dummies that never invests or pays off debt because it's such a hard decision. The worst thing that you can do is nothing. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your- He just said that, but in essence, what he just said is true. Procrastinating. I just read is 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 avoiding uh, an unpleasant emotion. I don't know how true that is. It hit home for me. Um, if this or something else financial is something you're procrastinating on, what he said is totally true. If you neglect to make a decision, that affects you. That is, in effect, making a decision. If you go your whole life without investing or without investing as much or as soon as you should have or as regularly as you should have things are not looking pretty i'll just say that uh, as someone who helps people plan their retirements there are quite a lot of people that did not plan your busy day to check out this video i hope you found some value in it please like comment and subscribe done we are not gonna like we might comment uh we might subscribe to just keep tabs on you but that is all for today folks i think we're gonna do another jared morrow one if this one gets uh some good traction if it doesn't we're gonna switch it up and maybe do something else we'll see all right thanks